but still hi guys <laughs> welcome back to lamb's time my name is praise if you're new welcome glad to have you if you're old you're a real one welcome back so today's topic is the voice of god and this topic was brought to you by a question send in your questions guys a question that somebody sent me asking about how do we hear the voice of god how do i just know that it's not just a figment of my imagination. Like, how do I just know that I'm not just picking and choosing stuff from the Bible? How do I know for real, for real, that I'm hearing or that that's actually supposed to be the voice of God? Um, so we're going to be diving into that today. It might end up being a two-part series, but we're going to start off at least with the first part. So I'd say the first part of hearing God's voice is, first of all, believing that you belong to God. Um, it says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice. And this goes back to acknowledging that you're not in charge of yourself. God is. You need to see yourself as a child of God, as someone that Jesus is leading, as someone that the Holy Spirit resides in, um, someone who is being led by God. I mean, another Bible verse, I think it's Romans 8, 14. It says, for as many are as led by by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So you have to accept and believe that you are a son and you are a daughter, like you are a child of God. And because you're a child of God, you will know your parents' voice. If I hear somebody say praise in a crowd, I should be able to, emphasis on should, I should be able to pick up my mom's voice regardless of if there are 20 moms in that crowd. I should know like a specific voice that belongs to my mom. And the reason why I know it's my mom's voice is because she's my mom. I'm her daughter. Like I've spent time with her. I have listened to her shout. I've listened to her talk like in different tones and intonations. So I know exactly how my mom sounds. And that knowing comes from the fact that I am her child. So you need to accept and revel the fact that you are God's child and you belong to him. The second point about hearing God's voice is that God does not like to shout. <laughs> God does not like to shout. What do I mean by that? I mean, there are countless references to this, but I'm going to use one of the most obvious ones about God loving to speak in a still, small voice. Um, so in 1 Kings 19, 11 to 18, I'm actually going to read it for you guys. It says, Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go stand in front of me on the mountain. I, the Lord, will pass by you. Then a very strong wind blew. The wind caused the mountains to break apart. It broke the large rocks in front of the Lord, but that wind was not the Lord. After that wind, there was an earthquake, but that earthquake was not the Lord. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but that fire was not the Lord. After the fire, there was a quiet, gentle voice, and that was the Lord. I just added that part. But God does not like to shout, guys. We are the ones that are always looking for drama. Like, there's a pastor that I listen to, and she says, God does not shout to somebody who is close. I'll take that again. Like, you don't shout to somebody who is close. So for you to for, hear that still, small voice, you have to be close to God. Like, you need intimacy. Intimacy is what brings you close to God's heart. So that way, like, there's no distance. It's when, like, we're far from God that he has to act on manner of drama in order to catch your attention. This is not, like, all the time, but most of the time when God is trying to catch your attention, that's when, like, fireworks and all the dramatics happen. I mean, examples like Moses and the burning bush, that was a catch your attention type of thing. But on a regular day-to-day -day conversation with Moses, you didn't see him performing all signs, all types of miracles because... They were talking one-on-one, -on -one, but to draw him in, there was razzmatazz, and that's the next point. The razzmatazz is great for when God is trying to get your attention, um, so you don't want to just stay stuck in the phase of God always trying to catch your attention. I mean, there are many examples of this. Gideon in the Bible, who was asking God, like, make this wet, make this dry, make this dry, make this wet, and God was doing that because attention, that's God trying to get your attention. But you just having a conversation with God requires you tuning yourself to be able to hear that still small voice. And this is going to lead to the next point. The third point is that it's okay to ask. If you're not sure if what you're hearing is God or not, the best person to answer that question is who? God! Because that's the person you're trying to hear from. 
So if you are hearing something or you're not hearing and you're not sure, the best person to ask is God, not me, not any big pastor, not anybody. If you're not hearing God, ask God. Don't go and look for answers somewhere else. Um, And it's okay to do this. In the Bible, Peter did when Jesus was walking on water and Jesus was like, come to me on the water. And Peter was like, is it really you? And then Jesus was like, it is I. And then Peter was like, if it's you, tell me to come. That's asking. Um, The same thing I was talking about with Gideon. He wasn't sure. And because he wasn't sure, he asked God. And God, that's why God was doing all those tumbo tumbo with him, like playing back and forth and putting water and all those things so that he could know for a fact that it was God. So if you're not sure, God is not a wicked God. Ask him and he will answer you. And to follow that God is not a wicked God point. I think I say this at least once a week because I have to remind myself that God is not a wicked God. In Matthew 7, 7 to 12, that's the whole like ask, seek, knock. If you read past verses 7 and 8, It talks about your heavenly father is basically not wicked. Like, will you ask him for fish and he will give you a snake? Like, he's like, even human beings who are wicked know to give good gifts to their children. How much more me, like your heavenly father, who is obviously good in all ramifications. So if you don't know something, if you're not sure if you're hearing God or not, the best person to ask is God. Ask him. He's not a wicked God. He will answer you. Now, when you ask, the question is, are you waiting for the answer? Are you listening for the answer? That's the question you need to ask yourself. So if you ask a question, wait for the answer. So the problem might not be that you're not hearing God or you're not sure. The problem might be that you're not waiting for the answer. And I know it's hard. It's easy for me to sit down here and say, wait for the answer. But um, in, I think it's Psalm, in Psalm 40 verse 1 in the TPT version, this one is going to pain some of you, but I'm going to read it all the same because that's what the Bible says. It says, I waited and waited and waited some more patiently, underline bold star, patiently, knowing God would come through from me. Then at last he bent down and listened to my cry. So some of the things that like you're asking God for, he's going to give you the answer. You just have to wait for it. So with hearing his voice, another thing you have to develop is patience. The patience to wait for the answers that you're asking for. So it's not that you're not hearing, it might just be that you're not waiting to get the answer. So I just wanted to kind of lay the foundation of kind of the different reasons why um, you may not be able to hear. So like you not being sure if you belong to God or not, or you knowing that you belong to God, but like it not really translating well into like your conversations with God, or you not knowing that God does not like to act too much drama, that he likes to talk in a still small voice, or the fact that you don't know that it's okay to ask God if you're not hearing him. Like it's not a mortal sin to not hear God. It's just a thing of where you ask because God is not a wicked God and he will answer you when you ask. And then we also revise that um, when you ask, you have to wait for the answer. So now we're going to go into some practical steps. So that's like the backstory. That's the nice christian stuff. But nitty gritty, the cocoa of the matter. How do you practically hear the voice of God? How do you practically know what God wants you to do? And a lot of people get tired of hearing this answer, but I'm going to give the same answer because it is the immutable fact. The biggest way to hear the voice of God or the biggest way to know that God is speaking to you is through his word. Why? Because the word of God is alive. The word of God, it says in John John 1, 1, I believe, like in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So literally, if you are reading the Bible, the word is God because God was, is and is to come. So if you're reading the Bible, you are reading God. If you're reading the Bible, you are reading the thoughts of God. If you're reading the Bible, you're reading the counsel of God. Are you reading the Bible? That's the question. I'm not going there. I'm not going for jugular, but are you reading the Bible? (laughs) If you read the Bible, you are reading the answer to your questions. You are reading the mind of God. Now, understanding what you're reading, that's the role of the Holy Spirit. 
go and watch the video don't make me repeat this every new video but understanding what you're reading is the role of the holy spirit so yes if you have access to a bible and you're reading it but you're not sure how it applies to you the person you ask is who the holy spirit he's the one that's going to interpret and give you understanding and bring shed light on what you're reading and show you the truth in there and show you the promises that apply to you so the biggest and best and first way to hear the voice of god is to read the word of god because the word is god the second one that i'm going to go for is the knowing or the impression in your heart or the nudging this goes by many names but these are like the smaller ones that i decided to use there are bigger ones for it but this is basically when you ask god for something you don't get like an audible answer you don't get any kind of quote-unquote dramatic answer remember we are not here for the drama you are here for the intimate answers um, but you don't get any dramatic answer but what you get is a strong for lack of better word feeling like a strong oomph in your spirit on the inside of you you get a strong like that this is the way i should go walk in it that's that might be the spirit of god like leading you because there's a part of the bible that says like you will hear a voice telling you like this is the way walk in it you may not be audibly hearing that voice but your spirit's response to the spirit of God. Why? Because you have the spirit of God living inside of you. And if you're being controlled by the spirit, you are responding to spirit nudgings. And that's just basically the Holy Spirit nudging you in the direction of, this is the path that I want you to take. This is what you should do. You should take that job. You should end that relationship. You should make that deal. You should go and apologize for what you did. You should X, Y, Z. So that knowing that strong impression in your heart about like something that could be the Holy Spirit like trying to get your attention. So I was just saying that for you to hear these nudgings clearly, you need to be still. It says in Psalm 46 verse 10, be still and know that I am God. That knowing are the nudgings we're talking about. But for you to have the knowing, you have to be still. You need to read that verse in many translations. It literally says, stop fighting, stop acting too much drama, stop being dramatic, stay calm, relax, sit down one place, be still and know that I am God. So when you're still, that's when the knowings become louder, not the spirit of God shouting more. It's just you being more quiet and hosting the presence of God and hearing God more clearly because you are being still. Just to expand on the nudging. So this can also cover when a song like when somebody pops up in your head to pray for let's say you're just doing your daily activities you're at work and somebody keeps coming to your mind those are the ways like god speaks to you when um, you wake up in the morning and a song is in your head not do me do me <laughs> but a song of the spirit you know pops up in your head and it's like you're singing it over and over and over not physically but it's playing over and over and over that is the spirit of god talking to you when a bible verse comes up in your mind when you're thinking about something or when you're when you're just doing stuff and a bible verse that is quote unquote totally unrelated pops up that's the spirit of god talking to you just those impressions those quote unquote random flashes of like songs of bible verses of people coming to your mind to pray for of questions of things like that Put a name on it. The name is the Holy Spirit. He's the one giving you those nudging. So the next one would be through dreams. Um, I know a lot of people actually like dreams. I used to be one of those people. I don't have anything against dreams. I still like dreams. Um, it's just that dreams can easily be manipulated. Um, some people are actually gifted with the gift. Like they have a gift of seeing dreams, like relevant dreams, not just fried rice and chicken dreams, like actual <laughs> relevant dreams. Um, but dreams are another way that God can speak to you. So, I mean, there are too many examples in the Bible, but I was looking and obviously Joseph, we know Joseph the dreamer, right? That was somebody who was gifted in having dreams. Um, so we also have Joseph, the stepfather of Jesus. Like he was the one who had a dream where an angel was telling him not to divorce Mary. Like we see like relevant dreams. Um, so that's obviously a way that God can speak to you. There are too many examples in the Bible 
um, the prophet, I mean, just way too many examples of God speaking to people through dreams. So pay attention to your dreams. Like you might actually, like God might show you something um, in your dream and it actually happened in real life. Like I'll share one example. I had a dream many years ago that somebody I knew was in an accident and it was ghastly and it was actually on the person's birthday and it was just dramatically bad and I was obviously terrified so I woke up I called like the person who I usually pray with who is my senior and they prayed with me and that was that believe it or not this person actually was in an accident but the difference was that the person did not die and I think it was actually on their birthday as well, if I'm not mistaken. So that was like a serious dream. So sometimes when you have dreams that have very bad like meanings, not to be afraid, but you want to take them seriously because it might be God showing you something for you to intervene. And if you just take it lightly, the result might be different. It's not to say that, oh, I'm the one that prayed away the bad thing, but God is not jobless. There's a purpose and there's a reason why he was showing you. So if you are not, if you are like, ah, somebody else will pray for it. What if you are the person that God puts that specific mandate on and you are being too lazy and you refuse to pray or you refuse to do something about it, you refuse to counsel, you refuse to intercede. Um, so you don't want to like write, like put dreams down because that's a major way that God can speak to you, especially on like big things. So this is one of the more like dramatic ways of how God speaks because dreams can be God showing you the future like at that time this was definitely the future because we were not in that particular time that that person had the accident but this was something that was going to happen in the future so dreams are a way that God can reveal to you what is coming dreams are a way that God can make things clear to you but at the same time remember that if you spend all of your nights watching Korean film like I tend to do sometimes and you go and dream and you see yourself let's say marrying somebody it can just be that your, your dream is translating. You need to be very careful with the dreams because they are easily influenced. They can be influenced by overeating. They can be influenced by too much sleep, too little sleep. They can be influenced by the things you watch, things you listen to, the, the people you spoke to. So dreams, I would always say, if you have any dream, go and check what the Bible said. And that's why we talk about the word of God first. It's because that's the one that doesn't change. It's not influenced by what you eat. It's not influenced by what you watch. It remains. So if you have any dream and you're not sure, the interpretation of that dream, remember you can ask God directly and God is the word. You can also look for the answer in the Bible as well. So another way you can hear the voice of God is through prophecy. This one has been bastardized all over the world. I mean, we have all manner of prophets. These days it seems like we have more fake prophets than real prophets, but um, this one I would say is an external source. So I tried to start from the internal sources. So you want to hear God from his word. That's you and him from the knowing impression in your heart. That's intimate. You want to start intimate with hearing God before you go global, before you start looking for external sources. External sources are to confirm. They are not to be the primary one like any other thing is a reassurance it cannot be the primary source so the primary source has to be an intimate source and then external sources can confirm so i would say prophecy is like an external confirmation and it may actually come before if it comes before you still need to go and get the primary source from an intimate source so prophecy is generally specific it's not just all those ones of like oh there are 20 people here and then you want to be one of those 20 people. If you're not one of those 20 people, it doesn't apply to you. No matter how much you claim it with your chest, it's not yours. The 20 people that were there that that prophecy was for are the ones that receive it because it's not magic. It's not like, oh, one size fits all. Um, so prophecy, I would say, is one that is just basically somebody, God tells somebody about something that's happening to another person and they relay the message. That's what a prophet typically does. Um, so that, again, you need to discern the spirits behind the prophets that you're listening to. Um, and every prophecy that is given, everything that we are going to talk about, you have to back it up with the word of God. If it does not align, please throw that prophecy in the trash because prophecy that does not align with God cannot be from God. That's the fact. So with prophecy, make sure that you're not taking that as your primary source. You need an internal source make sure that it aligns with the word of god 
Um, and if you do get prophecies, write them down because prophecies are like if you read in the Bible, the Bible is filled with prophecies. And these are like prophecies about Jesus. These are things that were said in the past. And then Jesus was born and he was the prophecy fulfilled. So prophecies are given to be fulfilled. So if you do get a prophecy like over your life, write it down so that like you can check on it from time to time and say, God, have fun, have fun this prophecy. Like what is it coming to pass? When it does come to pass, you can be like, wow, every single word that God said, not one of them has fallen to the ground. Okay. The next way is through discussions with others. Um, so that's why Lampsan is here is because God can talk to somebody through this discussion. Like God talks to people through conversations and people don't know this sometimes, but when you walk out of a conversation, first of all, this is why you should have kingdom community. Why? Because everybody, they have the spirit of God, right? And where the spirit of God is like, the spirit of God is going to speak. And even if people are talking about fashion, the spirit of God will speak. You're talking about soccer, the spirit of God will speak. You're talking about food, the spirit of God will speak. So that's why like you need to have godly community around yourself. When you have godly community around yourself, that's like six megaphones through which God can talk. And not like in a noisy manner, but in a complimentary manner of this person is going to say something you're like, wow. And this is not even Bible study. This is just normal conversation. But like, because everybody's spirit filled, God is just like going and going and going. Um, and that's why like these conversation kind of um, discussions are just the best because you learn so much. Like somebody is just, people are just talking. They're just talking and then they begin to talk about God and they begin to talk about how they live their life for God and they begin to talk about the choices they make and you're just with all the Christianism in me blessed and you don't know why you don't know why because the Spirit of God is there and the Spirit of God is ministering to you and the Spirit of God is renewing your mind and the Spirit of God is speaking to you even though you don't realize that you just think that oh this was a very good God filled conversation the Spirit of God is tugging at your heart, like bringing some of those topics to your remembrance later when you're on your own. And when you're like just meditating, when you're just ruminating, that's God like talking to you. Somebody can give you advice and you're like, wow, like how could I not have thought of that? That's God speaking through that person. When you go and ask for counsel from a wise person who has the Spirit of God and they tell you something, you're like, oh my God, like I can't believe that you put that together. They didn't. It was the Spirit of God through them. But when you're praying with somebody and you didn't tell them your prayer point, but they pray your exact need, that's the Spirit of God letting you know that He has you, like He's speaking to you. So pay attention to the conversations that you have. Now, obviously, if you're not surrounded by lots of people who have the Spirit of God, don't pay any attention because the Spirit of God is not speaking there. He's not going to be giving you truth and wise counsel from dirty vessels. subscribe hit the notification bell and share with your friends okay so that more people can learn how to hear the voice of god thank you so much again for watching